Fluent CRM is not only your customer relationship manager, it's also your email service provider. What I'd like to do is show you the email template so you can customize the look of your emails. And then we'll talk about what a campaign email is and how to go about it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a small business person just like you. Let's go ahead and dive into Fluent CRM and start taking a look at campaign emails. All right, I'm on the dashboard. And if we come over here to this top menu, you can see where it says all campaigns, email sequences, email templates, and all emails. I actually want to start over here where it says email templates. And the reason for that is you may want to customize the way your emails look. So you can give your uh, template a title, you can give it a subject line, but I want to come down here just a little bit further. So if we click on this plus, you'll see the blocks that are available to use inside of your emails. So you may want to create some custom things inside of your templates. This is what uh, is available. It's simply the same thing as the Gutenberg editor or the WordPress block editor, whichever you're familiar with. There are some people that have wanted to have a simpler editing platform, and that's not what's available inside of Fluent CRM. Also, if you want to do raw HTML, there's a way to do that as well. If you don't like the Gutenberg editor, I would recommend using something simple as a text editor to compose your emails and then cut and paste it in. If you want to use the raw editor, you'll notice that there's a series of templates over here. Click on this template raw email. There are services you can use that will create your HTML email. You can paste the raw HTML code in here and then it'll present and send off the way you want to. Otherwise, you've got a couple of different options. So this one that says simple box, you can see the way it looks right here. You can go over to plain centered and then you get nothing but a white background, but the box is still kind of centered in there. And then there's a classic one where everything just starts over here and you're using the full screen. I kind of like sticking with a simple box, so we'll do that. Now the other part that I wanted to show you here was this little button. If we click on that, this shows how you can style your email messages. So you can change your body background, you can change the content background, you can change the content width. And then, of course, the next row down, you've got the default content color, your headings color, and your footer color. So you can click these open and choose any color that's available there. And the same thing with your links. You can also choose the font families that you want. There are a few of them in here that are pretty popular. You've got a few that are from Google fonts like Open Sans, Roboto, and so forth. And you can do the same thing with your headings. If you notice over here, this little looks like a lifesaver. You can see that there are a couple things you can type in your code. So there's an at to see the smart tags and a slash to see all available blocks. So if we come over here, I'm just going to get this out of the way. I'm going to type in the slash key and that shows you the blocks that are available inside of the editor. However, there are other times when maybe you want to refer to somebody like by first name. So hi, comma, at, and then you can see the information that you can choose. So for example, if you just wanted to refer to somebody by first name, and it'll put in the short code for you there. On this little editor over here, you notice that we've got a few things. This is showing that you're in a paragraph mode. You are aligned to the left, bold, italic. This is in case that you wanted to put in a link. And then next over here, you've got a few other things. So if you want to put in smart links, for example, you need to do it this way. And we'll get into smart links in another video. And of course, you can change text color. You can do subscript, superscript, all those fun little things and put an image in line. You can do that using this little thing over here. And this little dot of, or series of dots over here is typical of the Gutenberg editor in case you need to copy something, duplicate it. If you want to move it around, if you want to edit as HTML, group some things together. So I won't go over that in detail because it, this is not a Gutenberg tutorial. But those are all things that are available for setting up the templates that you want to send to your subscribers. So let's go back over here. We'll go to all campaigns. And let's start off with what is a campaign. Some systems refer to this as a broadcast. Basically, this is where you're going to send an email message to all or part of your audience. You can create segments and send this to just the folks that are in that segment. You can send it to everybody, which most marketers probably would not do because you want to send the right email to the right person at the right time. So we'll start off over here with this button, create new campaign. And the first thing you want to do is give it a title. So 
So there's my test campaign email. And once you get this, you're going to go through a series of steps. So this is the name of the campaign. It is not the same thing as the name on the header of your email. You'll actually be able to put your subject line in the next section. but And it could be the same thing if that's the way that you want to organize things. But don't think that what you put over here is necessarily going to be your subject line. This is an internal organization for you. And you can change it. Click the little pencil icon. If you want to change that to something else, you can. So you have an option over here. If you did save an email template, you could click this and pull up one of the ones that you'd created. And otherwise, you can just simply choose one of these templates that are here and then start writing. So as I said, we can do at, and I want to do first name. Now keep in mind, if you've already set up your footer, as we've shown in a previous video, you don't have to recreate that here. It will automatically be included. So let's say that this is all that we're going to put in. You've got the little icon over here if you want to add a different block. It's just a different way of doing it instead of hitting the slash key. And if you want to look at all the options available, you click Browse All, and it will show you everything you have here that you can use inside of your email editor. So with that, I'm going to save this. Now you do have a couple of options. You can change your typography over here. You can change your color settings if you want to change the text or the background color. And of course, you've got this option for a drop cap. The advanced typography options allow you to select a font family, a line height, and then change your padding and margins. Once you've completed your composition of the email and it's looking the way that you want to, go ahead to continue to subject and setting. So your email subject, you can actually add some of these short codes in here and say, and what this will do is do a substitution. So for every email that you send out, if you have the contact's first name, it will show up right there. You can also do split testing. So if you want to change your subject and see which one does better, you can add a priority to it. And then you can add more and more. So if you want to do A-B testing, that's available here. The pre-header is that little bit of text that shows up in your email client underneath the subject line. So if you want to add a little bit of there to kind of tease somebody to get them to open your email, there's an option from that. It will use the default that you set in your email settings for who it's coming from, which email address, but you can change that. You can also add some UTM parameters and you can send a test email. So just put in an email address here and send that off. Usually I like to do that because if I put links in or something, I want to make sure everything works before I get it sent out to people. So next we'll go over to continue to next step. And this is where you can kind of decide who gets what. So do you want to send it by list? Do you want to send it to available subscribers? Do you want to send it by tag? So anybody who has the test tag. And I've got 100 people who have the test tag. So this next section is excluded contact. So are the people that you definitely do not want to see this email? For example, if you're sending a marketing message and you have customers who've already purchased, you don't want them to see that same message, whether they're on this list or not, and they have a tag for a customer of a certain product, you can put that in here and that will prevent them from receiving messages that are basically irrelevant if they've already purchased from you. So once you've done that, you can also take a look at sending a different way by a dynamic segment. So I've set up a couple of segments. Do I have WordPress users or users for this domain blogs.com. So those are your options. I prefer using either a list or a dynamic segment. I'm not a big fan of sending based upon tags, but there are times where it might come in handy. So I'm going to send this to everybody. And then I'll go to the next step. So it processes everybody that you have on your list. It gives you this little email body it kind of shows what was in there. You can still send a test email. You see the number of recipients. This is what it looks like, and this is your preview of the body. And then you have a choice now. You can send the emails right away, in which case it will process and go through. The speed that it sends depends upon your email service provider. So, for example, if I have Amazon SES, and it's configured to only accept 14 emails per second, then you'll divide your recipients by that time. Also, your server resources are going to factor in. If you don't have much power or 
the server resources are being consumed by something else, particularly true if you're on shared hosting, it may take a little bit longer. So the bigger server you have with the more resources, the better it can process the data to send it out. So keep in mind, your email send rate from your service provider and the resources available on your server will affect how long it takes to process these emails. You can also schedule the email. So I can go ahead and do a schedule over here, and then we'll open this up, and you can see after one hour or tomorrow, or you can come over here and specify a specific date and time. So if I click that this will go on Friday the 18th, then over here at the time, you can choose the hours, minutes, and even seconds. So let's say that I wanted to send this at 4 p.m. server time. And then that just gives us 1600. So you can see there's a little fault in what I've done here. I've got it set to 1600, but my server time says it's 1648. So that's something that you want to make sure that you're not trying to send this in the past. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and schedule this campaign. You can still come back to edit. You can edit your recipients, your subject. If you've changed your mind about your subject, you can go ahead and edit that here. You can change your body. You can always go back. So there's always an opportunity until you either send or schedule. And we can send a test email again. So and I'll send that off. So once you've got this scheduled, you can go ahead and click. And once you're done with it, you can click over here. You can see the emails that have been sent. You can see if they've been opened. You can check the link metrics if you had a URL inside and any actions that were taken. So if you added a tag or removed tags. So you can uh, find the subscribers who've opened the emails and who did not open in case you want to go back and resend or add tags to them. So there's plenty of opportunities here. And that's a quick look at how email campaigns work. You can use these to send off your weekly emails, digest. If you have a special offer, that's a one-time thing. Essentially, a campaign is something that you're going to send off. That's one email, not a sequence or segment of emails. You might send it to a specific segment of your users based upon lists or tags or dynamic segments. But the idea is that if you've got a message you want to get out to a specific audience, use email campaigns. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please go ahead and click the like button. That helps YouTube know that somebody liked this and they will share this with more folks. Please subscribe. We'll do more videos on Fluent CRM and other things to help small businesses. And finally, click the bell notification icon if you'd like to be notified when the next video comes out. I'm William Beam. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video.